when it comes to interest rates, we've had it pretty good recently. I know what you're thinking. Is this guy crazy? But interest rate stability is a great thing, and to me, means that we've had it pretty darn good. I mean, look at this graph. We peaked out the third week of October last year, but since then, there's been some ups and some downs, but it's pretty level. Yes, don't get me wrong. When you look at rates from a five-year period, current interest rate environment is, well, it sucks. But what if I told you that the tea leaves are showing that interest rates are going up this fall, with one of the top lenders in the country projecting the interest rate environment in the 8% range? Yes, you heard that right, 8%. Real quick. My name is Jeff Chupp, and I'm a recovering investment banker, turd real estate agent, and I've sold more than a thousand houses. If you're new to this channel, then I appreciate you considering hitting that like button as well as subscribing. So what tea leaves are we talking about here? Well, we don't have to go far to look at some recent news that puts the Federal Reserve in a real tough position. It all starts and kind of ends with the economy and its strength. People thought the economy was starting to slow signs of slowing down, which meant that inflation would subside in the Fed, well... They could take a breather or even maybe consider cutting rates. Durable goods unexpectedly soaring doesn't help with that argument. It actually kills that argument. Experts expected durable goods orders to actually fall by 0.9% in May. However, they actually ended up being up by 1.7%. That's a 2.6% swing from the expectation. That is a big, big move. And to make matters worse, this is the third straight month over month growth that it has now pushed year over year growth to 7.3%. So durable good orders are up, which means businesses and consumers are still spending like drunken sailors, which means that inflation, that's not going anywhere. This is not the bad news that the Fed was hoping for. Then there was U.S. new home sales data. Again, expectations were that new home sales would be down by 1.2% in May, but they skyrocketed to being up by 12.2% month over month. This is the third straight month over month gain and it's just getting crazy, but this month's data now sends new home sales up 20% year over year. I thought we were told that the increasing interest rates were going to collapse the real estate market, especially the new home sales and its builders. I guess the builders, they missed that memo as housing starts to jump 21.7% month over month in May. The 1.631 million housing starts was the highest number since April of 2022. That is a worry for the Fed, but the real thing that most likely made them, well, shake their heads in disbelief was that the U.S. home prices surged in April. All 20 cities in the Case-Shiller Index saw prices increase. They were expected to go up by 0.4% month over month, but ended up going up by 0.91%. Now, if you've watched a video before, you know that month over month real estate pricing data is, well, dumb. It's the year over year pricing that matters because real estate pricing, well, it follows trends. But prices going up for housing is not what the Fed was looking for in order to start taming the inflation. But here is the key to it all and why interest rates need to continue to go up. And they're going to go up this fall in my eyes. It all revolves around the money supply in our economy. Our money supply would need to decrease by $4 trillion or 22% in order to return to normal levels. The irresponsibility of COVID money printing is still in our economy. Inflation, it's not going anywhere. And the only tool the government has, as well as the Fed, has to decrease money supply is increasing interest rates, period. And they've been making some headway. Negative money supply growth has now happened for two months in a row. And this is the largest contraction we have seen since the Great Depression. A 10% drop puts a small dent in this issue, but at the end of the day, it's only a dent. The Fed's actions, they're working. Banks are less enthusiastic about making loans, but that credit crunch is mostly affecting small businesses in middle-class households. So here's the real question. Is the Fed serious about inflation and getting this number down to 2% and are willing to do, well, cause a more serious recession in order to do so? If so, then they have a lot more work to do in interest rates. Well, they're going up this fall. If they are not serious about it and are willing to sacrifice higher inflation rates for a smaller recessionary dip, then maybe they will just stay where they are. Personally, I think there is a middle ground here. They're going to be serious, but then the political headwinds are going to be too much and they will just need to flinch. It's an election year next year after all. This means rates going up in the fall and then some market stimulation happening in the spring, which is them cutting rates. I just don't believe the Fed truly acts independently. But there's a good chance that those 30-year fixed rate mortgages that people are calling high right now 
could well look like a bargain just three or four months from now. Until next time.